So, I'm back. The watermark is due. So today, I want to talk about a show that is said by many to be the best anime of all time. Now personally, I don't think it's the best, but I definitely do think it is one of my favorites. But seriously, I can't go a day without seeing a TikTok of people rating their favorite anime and putting Hunter x Hunter as first, then saying it's the best anime of all time. But maybe you can decide that. But first, let's talk about why you should watch Hunter x Hunter. First of all, this show is really good, which is actually contrary to what I first thought when I watched the first couple of episodes. To me, this seemed like a very stereotypical shonen anime. For any people that don't watch anime or aren't familiar with the term shonen, it's basically a type of show or series that is focused on action, exploration, and the growth of a character. They usually focused a lot on battles and fights, and some shows that are considered shonen would be Naruto or something like My Hero Academia. But back to what I was talking about before. So at the beginning, I thought it was a really stereotypical and standard anime. Everything seemed like it had been done before. The main character was your happy-go-lucky nice boy, and he set out on an adventure to become a hunter, which in this universe is sort of complicated, so I'll get back to that point later. But basically, he sets out to become a hunter so he can find his dad, who is also a hunter. And with this formula, you could almost guess the ending before you even started the series. And that's what I thought too, but I was along for the ride and I am very glad that I stuck around because things started to change and switch up during the Hunter exams. Which at first you would think would be a pretty basic anime arc, since a lot of other shows have different spin-offs on the idea, like the tuning exams in Naruto or the sports festival in My Hero Academia. And the show was going like you would expect it to and didn't really do anything crazy until the final stage. Now, I won't spoil anything, but it took a pre-established theme or idea in a lot of other shows and twisted it into a really fun and new idea. And that was only the beginning. After that, you couldn't really guess much about the story because always when you started to feel comfortable, the show throws you for a loop. And this isn't a bad thing either. If anything, it's it is extremely good because it keeps the viewer entertained and on your toes since you really don't know what to expect. But I will tell you the basics of the story and what type of stuff to expect because this is a why you should watch the video and I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be all that interested if you didn't really know what type of stuff to expect. And don't worry, there are no spoilers. Basically, the show revolves around our protagonist, Gon. He is 11 when the show starts and he wants to become a hunter so he can see his father, who is also a hunter. Also, you know how I said I would talk about hunters before? Well, let's finally discuss them. Hunters are technically people who have passed the hunter exam, but they can vary from many different careers and specialties. You can be a beast hunter and hunt many different beasts and creatures, or you can become a gourmet hunter which specializes in gathering ingredients and focuses on cooking. Or you can even become a blacklist hunter, which is basically just a bounty hunter, who are tasked with tracking down dangerous criminals. But these are only a few hunter paths, as you will since there are many more to choose from. And they basically cover every topic and idea that you can think of. But why become a hunter when you can just do this thing on your own? Which would be a very good question, but hunters are given hunter license which allow them into certain territories, give them certain access to information, and even 95% of all public facilities can be used for no cause. But there are a lot more perks, but basically the card is really powerful and very important. And it does kickstart the hunter exam and basically the story to a certain extent. Now that I have given some basic information about the story, I would like to talk about the characters. Now at first, like I said before, I thought these characters would be your basic anime protagonist along with his friends exploring the world, getting into new adventures and growing a sense of friendship along the way. But boy, was I wrong. First of all, Gon isn't your totally loving, aloof protagonist. He does some stuff that isn't really all that great, but he also does a lot of good throughout the series as well. Because the characters in this story feel real. Like the world feels lived in. These characters seem to have their own past, motives, and personality. They seem very real in a pretty amazing way. 
Now, I won't go into any spoilers, but the character relationships in this show are very complex and interesting. Some characters are friends, some are enemies, some join together to reach goals but also keep their personal interest at heart. They grieve when a friend dies, and that last part was very important. It shows a level of camaraderie between the characters, a sort of bond that was forged before we, the viewer, ever got to look into this world. In a sense, a lot of these characters seem very fleshed out and real. And I'm going to loosely quote a YouTuber by the name of Super Eyepatch Wolf, who also made an amazing video of why you should watch Hunter x Hunter as well. But he said that it is almost as though these characters are living and breathing off screen, but the camera just doesn't shine on them. Remember, that was a loose quote, but the idea is that these characters all perform arcs and plots of their own, if we the viewer see them or not. These aren't your stereotypical mustache twirling villain, but your multi-layered person. Personally, if I had to name one inherently bad or good person on the show, I don't think I would be able to. The characters are just too complex. Just like real life, there is no good or bad person, just an odd blend of grey, and I just find it very interesting that this show nailed that idea so well, because it is not something easily done. But I will admit, in this show, you will meet some of the most likable and interesting characters you will ever find. I have watched quite a few shows, and to be honest, a good majority of this cast is up there with some of my favorites. Trust me, I think you'll learn to love the characters like I did. Now that I've talked about the characters, I think it would be a good time to talk about this show's power system. Now if you are already hooked and want to go into the show completely blind, skip to the time on screen. But if you're still not sure and you want to know a little more, then keep watching, okay? Good. Now that you're still here, let's talk about the power system. To anyone who is unfamiliar with the power system, it is basically the show's thing. In Star Wars, it's the Force. In Marvel, it's superpowers. And in Jojo, it's stands. It's basically something that gives the characters of that universe an ability or something of the sort to do things that usually can't be done. And in this show, it's called Nen. It is very similar to Naruto's power system, which is Chakra, but there are a few key differences. Such as, even if you have a lot of Nen, it doesn't really mean shit if you can't harness it. And harnessing it takes a lot of strenuous training. Like, a lot. It is very difficult to become strong, which I actually like since it, since it is enjoyable to see a switch up and instead of just having power and insane power levels, you have to train to achieve your latent potential. Because everyone in this world has Nen. It is just the ability to open your nodes, which are basically aura pores, and harnessing the power that is special. And Nen has six different categories. That characters Nen can fit into. Enhancer, which basically just enhances your own body and strength. Transmuter, which allows you to change your order to match something else, like lightning or thread. Conjurer, which allows you the user to create objects from aura. A specialist, which basically has unique abilities of their own. Manipulator, which allows the user con to control animate and inanimate things. And Emitter, which allows the user to detach their aura from them. And you're basically born with one type, and that type that you were born with, you can use 100% of its power. But the farther you go, the less you will be able to match. Master it. An example would be a conjurer can master conjuring to 100%, but then they can only ma master a transmitter and specialized ability to 90% and so on. And also certain abilities can give an advantage over another, so if that happens in a fight, you're basically screwed. <laughs> now that I've given you the basics of the power system though, let's talk about the fight scenes. You have to realize that Nen was introduced like 30 episodes in, so before that the fights were good, but just a little basic and simple. But once Nen is introduced, the fights get really good. Like I said before, Nen can be used for so many different things, and it keeps the battles very interesting and unpredictable. Nen can be used to simply enhance your strength, maybe create lightning, even make some Jojo type stands. And along with the abilities, the users have many ways and styles to fight. And usually their ability complements that. And to be honest, the fights are super good. Like they are really well made. They have great action. They show a lot of emotions for our characters. And they just look really 
good. And that is something I don't hear a lot about this show. I mean, the animation, because it is really good. And on top of that, it is really consistent. Like I said before, I'm a big fan of Naruto, but I'll be honest, the animation can drop drastically at times. But in Hunter x Hunter, I don't really see that. The first episode and the last episode look just as good, if not better, than it started. And I'm surprised that it's not talked about a lot, because I feel like it is a really underrated aspect of this show. Just the consistency consistency, and dedication to the craft and making sure that it keeps the same level throughout the show is really good and commendable. Now, I would be lying if I said I didn't have my issues with the show, and I know, it is not, it is a why you should watch video, and I'm definitely not trying to deter you from the show, if anything, I really want to put you guys on it, but I feel like it wouldn't be fair if I didn't talk about my issues with it, first of all, I didn't really like the Greed Island arc all that much, at least the beginning of it. Now, I'm not gonna spoil anything, because I believe going to the show relatively blind is the best way, but personally, I thought the arc had a lot of potential, and it was a really cool idea. On top of that, the arc had probably one of the worst villains I have ever met. Like, it was a big drop in what Hunter x Hunter had previously established. Like, his design just kind of threw me off. Like, you'll probably understand what I mean once you watch it. And to make this all worse, it came after one of my favorite arcs in all of anime. But honestly, it wasn't all bad. Um, I, I was actually getting into it around like, I don't know, I'd say like two thirds of the way. I would say, but it was just pretty slow to start and was definitely a dip in the series. Also, yet again, the beginning of the show, I know it was a little boring and stereotypical and I know it doesn't give off the most interesting vibes, but seriously stick with it, trust me, it's only like that for like three episodes, but other than that, I really don't have any issues with the show. This show is honestly really amazing. It handles so much and does such a great job at storytelling as well. This show can get dark at times, like really freaking dark. It explores some themes that you wouldn't really expect it at first, like war, the blurred line between monster and human, the fact that humans will always be on top because we are ruthless killing machines. Greed, revenge, sacrifices, and the grayness that comes with people being neither good nor bad, but a mix of both. For God's sake, it even has a rendition of North Korea. I'm not kidding. There is a fictional version of North Korea in this show. Overall, this show does so much right and it's just such a blast to watch. It has some of the most amazing, interesting, and lovable characters. Also, I have to mention this, but the Phantom Troop is super cool. Like, definitely some of my favorite characters in the show come from here. And honestly, this show is just a blast. It is in my top 10, and has had a lasting effect on me, as funny as that may sound. But hopefully, I convince you to watch this show. If not, go and watch Super Eye Patch Wolf's video on the matter. It is really good. But hopefully, you'll get to sit down, relax, and enjoy the adventure as you're engulfed in the world. <laughs> I'm not going to